Okay, now in this one, look at it and process how it's different than example one. This one's multiplying everything together, so you don't have to worry about simplifying them first, okay? You just worry about multiplying, so you're gonna multiply all the outside numbers. Three times four times two is 24, and then all the inside numbers, because it's still gonna be under the, the square root. Two times 12 is 24, 24 times three is 72. Okay, and now we have to simplify it, and we're gonna do it both ways in case you guys have different preferences, okay? 72 divided by two is gonna give you 36. 36 divided by two is gonna give you 18. 18 divided by two is gonna give you nine. Nine divided by three, because it can't be two, is gonna give you three, and that means you're left with three times three times two times two times two. Okay, what are your pairs? Two, you can take out a two and multiply that by 24 and take out a three and multiply that by 24 and be left with what? For two. Two times, three times two is six, six times 24 is I don't know. Wee, wee, wee. Sorry about that noise. Six times 24 is 144. So your answer is 144 square root two. Okay, now the other way to do it would be to think about 72 and what square root you have. Well, I automatically think of nine and eight. I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't think of anything else. Square root nine and square root eight. I guess I could've done 36 and two, but I didn't think about that one. So let me show you what happens. This one you get is a perfect square root of three. Okay, but then look at eight. You can factor that more. Perfect square root of four and, a perfect square, and then a square root of two. So you have two out here. And then you're gonna get the exact same thing. You're left with square root two, and you have two times three is six, six times 24 is 144. So your answer ends up, ends up being the exact same thing. So let's okay, this one three. combines a lot of different stuff, but we first have to distribute, okay? So four square root three times two square root three is gonna be four times two is eight. And then look guys, as soon as you see that you're doing a square root three times square root three, square root of the same thing, well, that's the square root of nine, which is just three. So it just cancels out those square roots and you're left with three. You're not left with nine, you're left with three. So it's eight times three. Minus four times one is four. Square root of three times six is 18. Three times six is 18. So right here, you're left with 24 minus four square root 18. Okay, what's the square root of 18? We can do it two different ways. So our prime factorization is 18 divided by two is eight, nine. 9 divided by 3 and 3. So you have 3, 3, 2. So you're left with 3 on the outside. So that's 12 square root 2. You could do it the other way. You could go square root 18 times square root 9, square root 2. Take out the 3 and you're left with the 2. Okay? So either way you do it, your answer is going to be 24 minus 12 square root 2. Okay, let's get into Something about parallel lines. Okay, you're gonna do perfectly on these if you remember one concept. Okay, I'm gonna read this to you so you understand why I'm gonna teach you this concept. It says, find the equation of the line. Okay, so we already know we're gonna use y equals mx plus b. Find the equation of the line. This is the equation of a line that is parallel to the line 2y minus x equals 2 that passes through this point. Parallel, you guys, is this, right? It never touches. Here's what you need to know about parallel lines. If you wanna write this down, that's fine, or just put it into your memory and never forget it. Parallel lines always have the same slope. Parallel lines always have the same slope. So when they say that they wanna find the line that is parallel to this line and passes through this point, I'm gonna show you what you do knowing that one concept, that parallel lines always have the same slope. The very first thing you do is you put this equation into the normal line equation. You have your y by itself. So you go 2y, move over the x is x plus 2. Then divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. So it's going to be y equals 1 half x plus 1, right? That's the equation of this line in the form of a line. All you're grabbing from here, you guys, is the slope. You know that the slope is the same. So now the equation of your line that you're forming right now is gonna have a slope of one half. And then you don't need this line anymore, okay? So now you're gonna make your own line. Well, what are you gonna do? You're gonna go y equals one half x plus b, right? 
Now all you have to do is solve for B because you have your float. What are you gonna use to solve for B? You're gonna use that nice little point that they gave you over here. So it's gonna be negative one for Y and three for X. So negative one equals three halves, because that's three times one half, plus B. So you minus three halves, right? Well, negative one in a fraction is gonna be negative two over two, right? So negative two minus three halves is gonna give you negative five over two equals your B. So now your equation of your line is gonna be Y equals one half X minus five over two. And there you go. If you're not confident in the whole, like, why does the one turn into the two over two and stuff like that, let me know. Let me know that specifically what you're not confident in, okay? So that I can help you on that part, like turning big, like whole numbers into fractions and stuff like that. Or any part that you're not super confident in. Okay, so let's do the practice. Okay, here we go. Your um, answers are A is eight, square root 10 minus six square root 35. B is six and C equals is y equals one third x plus two. Okay, so if you need the explanations, here we go. Okay, we're gonna simplify 40. Um, I'm gonna pull out square root four and square root 10. Okay, so that's gonna be a two out here, so it's gonna be eight square root 10. Minus, I have no idea what to pull out on this one, so let me start with four, see if that will work. Mm-hmm, square root four, and then that will be 35, let me just check. Yep, square root 35. And I guess that's all actually we can do, so it's gonna be two, so it's gonna be six square root 35. And that's your answer. Okay, eight square root 10 minus six square root 35. This one is three times three is nine, then two, square root two times square root two is just two, remember? Because it ends up being square root four, then square root four, square root four is two. So that's 18. Minus three times one is three, square root two times square root eight, and square root 16. Ooh, happy, because it's gonna be 18. Square root 16 is four, so four times three is 12. 18 minus 12 is six. That's how they get the answer of six. Okay, then look at this one. Find the equation of the line that is parallel to this line and passes through that point. Okay, so first we need to find the slope on this one. Remember slope, the parallel lines are the same slope. So we're gonna go y equals x plus five, divide by three on all of them, right? So divide by three, divide by three. So your equation is y equals one third x plus five over three. The only thing we need from that is the one third. So let's put it over here, our m equals one third. Okay, then erase that, we don't need it anymore. y equals one third x plus b. How are we gonna find the b? Put in this point. Three equals one third times three, is one times three is three, over three is one, so that's just x plus b. I mean, x plus b. Whew. Three times one third is one plus b. So look at that, our b equals two, right? Because three minus one is two. So our equation is y equals one third x plus two. Just check to make sure that I did that right. Yep, there's your answer. Okay, have a great day, you guys.